My name is Anita Chen. I'm the program coordinator at Arthritis Consumer Experts. I am here today on behalf of via the Arthritis Broadcast Network. I'm here to interview Marianne Fitzcharles. She's a rheumatologist at McGill and she will be doing a workshop on Saturday at the Canadian Rheumatology Association annual meeting. Hi Marianne, how are you? Good afternoon, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to have a chat to you today. So Marianne, I understand you don't do your talk until Saturday, it's only first year right now, so you must have a chance to go to other, attend other workshops. Um, so far, what do you think is the most exciting and important thing from this year's uh, CLA meeting or that you expect to be the most ex exciting? Well, so this is just uh, the first 24 hours into, into the meeting and um, I've already heard some information that's been really outstanding. Um, I was particularly impressed with the uh, wonderful results that uh, Dr. Silverman presented to us about the treatment of adult Stills disease and Stills disease in children. So what we're seeing is um, results and response to therapy that is absolutely outstanding, which is very, very exciting. Uh, a second uh, issue that I think is going to become very important, I practice in Quebec, um, and there was the discussion about Lyme disease uh, last night. And uh, this was by the infectious disease specialist, Dr. Dow. And this is certainly going to be an issue that we're going to be uh, faced with in the next number of years because uh, the tick is moving further up north uh, in Canada. I think we're going to see a lot more Lyme disease, but I also think patients are going to come and believe that they have Lyme disease, and we're going to have to deal with that. And the third thing that uh, I heard today, also uh, from the infectious disease specialist, Dr. Dow, was um, really the importance of immunization and vaccination um, of our patients. So it's been very good so far. So in terms of social media, what do you think about the use of social media in relation to patient care and medical research? Well, I think a question like that is uh, is answered very much dependent upon your age. Um, I think that if you're a young rheumatologist or a trainee, you're absolutely into it. I think uh, for us who are a little more mature, it's um, a big learning curve. I must say that I'm only just at the point of uh, putting things on my iPhone, um, but I have never explored things like Twitter and things like that. Certainly our patients are going to be accessing social media much more, much more commonly and therefore I think any information that is available on the social network should be as valid as possible. And your presentation on Saturday is on medical marijuana. Um, what are the patients views on regarding medical marijuana in their arthritis treatment? Well, I think there are a number of issues that we need to need to be thinking about, particularly at this point in time, because uh, the regulations um, for use of medical marijuana um, will be changing on the 1st of April. So at this point in time, Health Canada requires that a physician sees a patient, um, acknowledges that marijuana has been used, and that marijuana is effective. And the physician essentially does not give a prescription at this point, but states that this agent has been used for the patient, and the patient then gets permission from Health Canada to be able to uh, use, the, use the product. From the 1st of April, everything is going to change. And what is going to be required is that physicians are essentially going to be required to write a prescription. So this is a very big change. Um, I will address really arthritic disease and rheumatic diseases. And uh, we practice evidence-based medicine. And to date, unfortunately, there has not been a single study that we could use to 
inform us regarding either the efficacy or the side effects of uh, medicinal marijuana in patients with rheumatic diseases. Now, there is a huge groundswell, there is an advocacy. Um, many people have used medical marijuana um, anecdotally, um, might uh, state that there has been a good effect. However, this is not scientific evidence. Um, and I think that certainly as a rheumatology community, we have got to very strongly advocate for uh, sound scientific study. For patients who are considering going into medical marijuana, what, what are the risks and benefits? So again, uh, we do not know. Uh, the only way that we can have any idea about either benefits or risks is by accessing the anecdotal literature, which we know is not good, strong scientific literature, and um, then perhaps looking at uh, studies that have been done in persons using medical marijuana um, recreationally. Um, there are big concerns about uh, marijuana, and in fact, if we look at the Health Canada document, um, the Health Canada document states that there is no evidence in rheumatic diseases. Number two, it is also recommended that um, cognitive function might be impaired, as well as psychomotor function, which means that um, you might not be very good at driving. And Health Canada states that you should not drive within 24 hours of use of medical marijuana. So our patients with arthritic disease need symptom relief, but they also need to maintain function. And in our Western world, function means driving a motor vehicle. There is increasing evidence that um, the motor function is impaired following use uh, as the concentration of THC increases. Um, there is reduced motor function. Um, and there is also a, a really greater risk of accidents and death in accidents. So we have a lot of concerns. I think it is something very different if there is no treatment available. However, for our patients, um, there are a number of other treatments that currently are available to manage pain in rheumatic diseases. So medical marijuana certainly is um, something of great concern to us and to the rheumatology community. And it will be the future of medical marijuana. Do you, do you foresee a great future for that? I think it's got to be tested. It's That's got it. to be. It's yeah. got to be adequately evaluated. Now, um, you know, in in medicine, when we evaluate a product, we, we know about we look at a single molecule, and we test that molecule. Um, I think we have to understand that when we take the plant product of marijuana, we're looking at more than 400 molecules. So it really is a big mixture. We don't really know which is the molecule that is effective, if it is. We don't really know which is the molecule that causes the severe side effects. Thank you so much, Marianne. And I look forward to attending your session on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you.